Coming up on Around San Diego, we've been working for you for months, figuring out what's going on with abandoned buildings across the county. Our Brian White has an update from Ramona. And some Californians are dropped from their homeowner's insurance and pushed to another. The reason the FAIR plan could not be the best solution. Plus, some teachers may frown on students using artificial intelligence to write papers, but a local school says it could have an important place in the classroom. Hi there, and thank you so much for joining us as we take you around San Diego. I'm CBS 8's Jenny Day. I'll get you caught up on a week's worth of news and look ahead in just 30 minutes. We do begin with our investigation into what's happening with abandoned and rundown buildings around town. We have learned the McDonald's in Ramona is getting a redo. Take a look, that video on your right is what it looks like today. So our Brian White is working for you and has that update. This abandoned building series for me started right here in Ramona with this McDonald's that had been vacant for years, but now we're seeing progress as renovations are underway. But let me show you what this place looked like before. Every time you drive by, I work out right here. I have to see it every day. It makes our community look like crap, I mean, unfortunately. I was out here in September when the building was marked up with graffiti and surrounded by a dilapidated fence. It sucks because, you know, there's been nothing there. <sighs> In August 2021, a fire broke out in the basement that scorched the inside. The store had been closed and vacant ever since, and people in the area were fed up with the eyesore. I mean, if this is, you know, the face of Ramona, I mean, this is not a good example. Now, after nearly three years, renovations are finally underway. It looks much better right now with the exterior work that they've done and the new paint and then the new arches and all of that. So yeah, it's not gonna be the eyesore it was when I talked to you last. We also showed you the old Kmart down the street at the Ramona Station Shopping Center. I went by there, it's still boarded up and looks like they're still searching for a tenant. And then there was the old Fry's Electronics Store in Murphy Canyon that closed its doors for good more than three years ago. In November, I tracked down Bay West Development, who manages the property. They told me a massive redevelopment was in the works, but couldn't share details. Now, five months later, I called them back. They told me plans are still underway. They're just finalizing a construction loan and can share more with me in about two months on what's going in there. And of course, I'll let you know. Then there was this vacant building on Cedar Street in Little Italy I showed you in November after being vacant for four years. San Diego City Attorney Mara Elliott calling it a nuisance property and suing the owner. To settle the case, the ownership agreed to demolish the building, but five months later, I can see nothing's happened yet. I asked the city attorney's office for reasons why. They said the building actually has a historic designation, and the owner is waiting on permit approval for the demolition. Meanwhile, in Ramona, folks are happy that the McDonald's will no longer be an eyesore and should reopen their doors by early summer. I am very happy. Yeah, it's been a long time coming. I'm really excited to see what the finished product looks like. Working for you, Brian White, CBS 8. Yeah, remember when Fry's was called Incredible Universe? Good stuff, Brian, thanks. Well, now to a push to extend rent protections of mobile home tenants in National City. Two years ago, National City approved an ordinance which caps rent increases for mobile home parks. Mobile homes are not included in the state's 10% cap on rent raises. That protection, though, now set to expire at the end of this year. Hopefully we're able to take it on the council and my colleagues agree that we preserve naturally affordable housing and we keep it at 5%, uh, not just on a two year basis, but hopefully on a permanent basis. Yeah, this impacts about 380 households. The council member tells CBS 8 he hopes they make the ordinance permanent. Again, CBS 8 is working for you to get answers about the FAIR plan, California's fire insurance of last resort. CBS 8's David Gottfriedson talked with a consumer advocate about why the FAIR plan may not be the best solution for homeowners whose policies have been canceled. It's not a normal home insurance policy. Most people never hear about the California FAIR plan until their homeowner's insurance gets canceled. It only covers fire, lightning, internal explosion. It doesn't cover water damage, leaks, your toilet overflows. 
Amy Bach is a consumer advocate with the nonprofit United Policyholders. She says the FAIR plan is more expensive but necessary. It's much better to have FAIR plan coverage than to have no coverage. That I can say. Once viewed as the fire insurance of last resort in high-risk wildfire areas, more and more homeowners, even in lower-risk areas, are now being forced into the FAIR plan. Why is the fire insurance worse than fire insurance I would get from one of the main insurance carriers? Aside from it being more expensive. They typically outsource. They don't have their own claim adjusting force. Everything takes longer. It's hard to find a person there. Uh, they just are not known for quality claim handling because they just weren't built to provide that. They were built basically to be a stopgap until you could find a policy somewhere else. The FAIR plan is funded by all mainstream insurance carriers in California not taxpayers. For homeowners being told they have to go with the FAIR plan, Box says, keep shopping around. You definitely want to talk to more than one agent because if an agent says, I have nothing for you but the FAIR plan, there might be another agent that would have something else for you. And keep in mind, the FAIR plan can be modified to include things like dwelling replacement coverage, inflation protection, or building code upgrades. You can buy enhanced coverages, and you should. Remember, the FAIR plan only covers fire damage. You're going to need a separate policy with another company to cover everything else. Earthquake, flooding, somebody getting hurt on your property. David Gofferson, CBS 8. David, thank you. And right now, local leaders are calling on federal authorities to step up border security along San Diego's beaches. This comes after this video captured the moment a motorboat was dangerously speeding through the water over the weekend in Carlsbad. It then runs ashore as a group of people race off and evade capture. Local leaders are now calling for action from Sacramento and Washington, D.C. on both sides of the political aisle. First, I'm thinking how dangerous it was. There was no regard for public safety for surfers or people who are in the water at the time or even on the beach. Yeah, Democratic Congressman Mike Levin called on House Speaker Mike Johnson to bring a maritime border security bill to the House floor for a vote, which could double the range that CBP agents could operate to address migrants and other vessels arriving by water along our coast. Well, homelessness in San Diego County has risen for the 24th month in a row. Data from the Regional Task Force on Homelessness shows that most people impacted are over 55 years old. The nonprofit Father Joe's Villages says there's more work to be done, including adding more detox beds to reach more people needing assistance. More than 600 people in this recent year have died on the streets, half of whom have died, died from drug overdoses. So we, we can only help them if they're alive. We have to keep them alive to be able to truly help them. Yeah, meanwhile, San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria announced he may be cutting some Housing Commission funding. Vargas tells us that this is concerning since many beds at Father Joe's Villages are supported through the Housing Commission. Well, San Diego police are investigating incidents involving a man with a badge knocking on people's doors and asking for help. A woman in Ridgeview tells us that the man showed up at her door at 2.30 in the morning. When she answered, he told her that he needed money to get to his son at a hospital. She realized something was up, and then when he said that he asked her neighbors the same thing and then gave her the wrong names, though. A woman in North Park also says the same man showed up at her door. The women are okay and no crime was reported, but police worry that the man is using a badge to get access to potential victims. Well, the former teacher of the year, Jacqueline Ma, who's accused of having inappropriate relationships with two students, was back in court this week. There were expectations that details about recent plea deal negotiations might be revealed, but instead we learned that Ma has decided to move forward with a new defense attorney. That move forced a change in the trial date. Ma is accused of having inappropriate relationships with two 12-year-old boys who were students at the school where she taught at in National City. Ma and her new attorney are expected back in court at the end of May. 
Well, an environmental group is naming the Tijuana River one of the most endangered in the U.S. The nonprofit American Rivers made the distinction in a new report out now. The Surf Rider Foundation hopes the new report will turn even more federal attention toward the cross-contamination and pollution in the Tijuana River Valley. It's also a national security issue. Um, the Navy SEALs can't train here in polluted waters when, when the flows are bad. Uh, Border Patrol agents are forced to enter polluted waters sometimes for their jobs. Lifeguards are forced to enter to, to do rescues. Yeah, the Surfrider Foundation and the Baja-based nonprofit Unmar de Colores are asking people to sign a petition calling on Congress and President Biden to fully fund infrastructure to fix the problem. The federal government has earmarked $400 million for it, but both groups say a fix will cost $600 million more. Well, right now, county public health officials are warning people to not eat frozen oysters imported from South Korea. They say nearly a dozen cases of norovirus have been linked to those bad oysters. The county says 11 people fell ill after eating oysters at 100 Seafood Grill Buffet in Mission Valley between March 31st and April 1st. The FDA is urging restaurants and stores that sell oysters to check their freezers and verify the origin of their oysters. We do have that information on our website, cbs8.com. They're so good, right? Still ahead, the name of a local elementary school could soon be changing. The reason parents are pushing for it to happen. Well, Henry Clay Elementary School in Rolando may soon have a new name. People have pushed for a name change for years now, outraged that the current name honors a former U.S. statesman and slave owner who worked to maintain slavery. But the proposed new name, Rolling Hills Leadership Elementary, is receiving pushback as well. The district informed us that the reason for the name Rolling Hills was to honor the indigenous community, which knowing the history of Rolando and Rolling Hills is just altogether absurd. Yeah, many parents pushed to rename the school Bell Hooks Elementary after the renowned black feminist scholar. While no vote was taken yet, the board appeared united in trying to make a decision as soon as the next board meeting that is set for April 30th. Well, a new report is recommending what is now Pachanga Arena, the old sports arena, be designated as historic. The building is set to be torn down as part of the Midway Rising project. But a report to the City of San Diego's Historical Resource Board says staff found the arena qualifies as historic and the demolition would create significant historical impacts. The city says that even if the arena gets a historical resource designation, it will not stop demolition. The report says that developers could lessen the impact by including historical photos of the current arena in the new one, but that will not eliminate it completely. Interesting. Well, how about an AI program that creates a chat bot for students? It's like a personalized digital aid for each student. It's in a trial run at one of San Diego Unified School District schools, and staff and students say so far it's a success. In this Innovate 8 report, CBS 8's Anna Laurel shows us how it's opening the world of possibilities to kids. I'm here at Toller Elementary School near Mission Bay where they are harnessing the positive power of AI. This is not like a classroom that I grew up in. Georgia's one of these colonies. What's that named after? What's Virginia named after? For students at Toller Elementary using this school AI platform, getting answers within seconds fuels their curiosity to ask more. The main thing with respect to things like the AI bots is it encourages students to start asking questions. Okay, go for it, because you're good at this. And because each student has their own chat bot to ask their own questions, their learning experience is personalized, their critical thinking skills sharpened. I like how you can just like um, ask any questions you want and you don't have to raise your hand. If you're just reading on a book, there are some questions that can't be answered. Rather than information being fed to you and you're having to design how you're going to ask that question to solicit the information you need, that's really a higher depth of knowledge of learning. Let's ask about these caterpillars. like Toller's principal, Lori Brady Francis, says she and her staff are always looking for ways to engage students, to find the joy in learning. So she brought in AI education specialist, Holly Clark. They're talking to an AI chatbot 
about what happens in the life cycle of butterflies. Because Holly teaches the teachers how to use AI in the classroom, and they love it. First grade teacher Amber Burkett has been teaching for 16 years. I see improvement. Definitely, they're all able to participate and talk and share out, even the ones that necessar don't necessarily always talk or participate. For all the students with English as a second language, AI meets them where they are. To be able to say, I'm right with you, I get it. Monarchs can play dead. So after a room full of first graders gets to ask their AI chatbot anything they want in any language they want. What did you learn? They have so much to share. It's like a cozy sleeping bag for them. At Toller Elementary School near Mission Bay, this is Anna Laurel for CBS 8. So sweet, Anna, thank you. Well, is San Diego becoming the next Hollywood? We are looking into why more big name production companies are choosing to film right here. We are hearing lights, camera, action more often here in San Diego. CBS 8's Brian White shows us why some of the world's biggest production companies, including Disney, Warner Brothers, and Netflix, are choosing to shoot here. We want Hollywood to understand that you don't have to be married to L.A. We're here. We've got all the same looks. And again, they're way better. Guy Langman is filming program manager for the city of San Diego's special events and filming office. He says when it comes to film shoots, San Diego has everything a production company could want and more. When you think about filming, you have to think about what can it double as? What, what could something be something else? If you weren't from San Diego and you were looking straight there, that could be anywhere. That could be Los Angeles. That could be Las Vegas. That could be New York, Chicago, Miami. Of course, San Diego's beaches and parks are a huge draw for film and TV, but Guy pointed out that other types of productions are also attracted to our downtown streets. If you look down, this is actually the zone where most of our car commercials, they'll do car loops, driving loops, past Central Library in this great architecture, um, Cadillac, Volkswagen, Buick. In the last 60 days, all three of those have done major national ads, and this is their driving route here. The California Film Commission offers tax incentives to eligible productions for shooting their film or TV shows here in the state, but they can also get an extra 5 or 10 percent tax credit for filming outside of Hollywood, making San Diego a great money-saving alternative while also bringing economic benefit to our area. If they're down here, they have to stay in hotel rooms. They have to eat meals. They have to rent security. They have to rent parking lots, and all of that ties up into the economic activity. Activity. Guy told me that last month an unnamed Warner Brothers feature with more than 100 cast and crew members spent a week filming at downtown locations. We're waiting for the final economic impact numbers, but we're anticipating them in the high six figures. He says when Top Gun Maverick was filmed here, it spurred a lot of interest by local policymakers to draw more productions to the area, not just to the city, but across the county. In the end, Everybody in the San Diego region wins, whether they're filming in the city of San Diego, whether they're in Chula Vista, whether they're in unincorporated county. We all see benefits from this. I'm Brian White for CBS 8. Yeah, it'll be cool if you happen to notice it in the background of uh, the next movie or show you watch. All right, that will do it for us. Thank you for your time. As always, thank you for staying informed. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day. Take such good care.